the client of me to introduce Katerina Schupa. Uh, she's a leading investigation in the fields of the neurology in the archaeology and works in the University of uh, Slovenia, the Ljubljana. Uh, Katerina is, is a long guest here in the university, has been here for more than 10 years and has been working with different people. Um, I'm very fortunate to work with Katerina, which is very nice. Um, in the context of the seminarios, uh, advanced seminarios of theology, department of theology, of restoration and conservation, uh, is not easy. Um, Katerina uh, will talk to you and will expect a lot of questions. Um, please enjoy the talk. Katerina, what do you want? Uh, thank you so much. Hello to everybody. Thank you for uh, investing your time to listening to this uh, lecture. Hello also to everybody who will watch this video. Um, I will talk about dendrochronology and ecology because I assume that is your interest. But first I want to tell where I am from. Slovenia, you see it on the map. It is approximately 1,400 kilometers from Alicante. The capital of Slovenia is Ljubljana. It is touristically very popular destination, also very popular by students. So a great part of population in the town uh, students. Uh, I am working at the University of Ljubljana. In Ljubljana we have just one university, but it is a big one. Uh, and part of this university is biotechnical faculty, where I work. Uh, and it is located a little out of Ljubljana in the green environment. So everybody likes forests and mountains in Slovenia and this would be from the official presentation of biotechnical faculty. It has seven departments and as you see more than 580 people are working there and we have more than 2,800 students. I'm coming from the department written below, Good Science and Technology which is very different uh, from your ecology department. Uh, this would be the study programs which we have. They are also related to our departments. And maybe for you, the department of biology would be more interesting with more topics in common. Uh, we also have master's study and we also have doctoral program with a lot of subjects, but I didn't prepare the subjects of doctoral program. And the department of wood science is very technological, but we are working with wood, wood biology, wood anatomy, dendrochronology, and that all is closely related to ecology. It could be of your interest. This would be the contact details. In the first slide, I showed you my email, so you can send me an email um, if you would need the long version of this presentation. I can also give the PDF to your professors to publish it. Uh, to send it to you, but the official email of our international office is here, and please remember it. I will say a few words about cooperation between Spain and Slovenia. Here I have to mention Professor Dr. Josep Davintos. He came to Slovenia to a field week, which was attended by different students, professors, and the uh, main uh, teacher of that field week and organizer was Fritz Schweinbrugger, a very famous professor in the field of dendrochronology. Josette 
Ravintos loved Slovenia, so he spent his sabbatical in our laboratory, which you can see in the middle picture. Then he invited me to University of Alicante, and I visited your university uh, several times, and we signed the Erasmus bilateral agreement. So this and my lecture is a part of this cooperation. Uh, since then, uh, that is more than 15 years, a lot of students from Slovenia came to laboratory of Professor Radintos and uh, uh, successfully did mainly research work, finished their bachelor thesis, defended them in Ljubljana, uh, and also had a lot of fun, and are now fun <laughs> to say. And I also searched on YouTube what do the students from Spain and from abroad say about Ljubljana. You can see various or find various YouTube presentations. These three are very nice to me, and they mainly say that Slovenia is green, that we have nice culture. They also say that we have nice people. I can assure you that we also have history. So it is a lot, but also a lot of fun, and you can find a lot of presentation on parties, on new friendships, <laughs> and so on. So you can find all that in Slovenia, and the students from Spain, for instance, find it also interesting because our geographical position makes it possible to stay in Slovenia and visit the countries around us, Austria, Hungary, uh, Croatia, Serbia, Bosnia, Italy, and so on. And all these arrows are within 400 kilometers, so it means you are there by car in four hours. In all the cities I write here, uh, also Venice, Vienna, and uh, France towns, uh, cities like that are there. Besides Professor Josep Travintos, I have to mention your very important alumni, uh, Dr. Martin de Luis, who studied here. He studied, uh, he's on the right on the picture. He studied biology, made his PhD in ecology, but his postdoc was partly also um, done in Slovenia partly into some USA. And uh, the two of them are our very, very good partners. And among the students, I will mention Clemen Novak. You can see him there, or you can see him on the picture. So that is the situation of today. And that is the situation one year ago when he finished his PhD here. So he started his studies in Ljubljana, made his diploma in Ljubljana, but the PhD in Alicante, and in between were a lot of projects and common publications. And this is the picture of uh, Fernando Poseros, uh, who is from, uh, who studied in Alicante and spent six months in Ljubljana last year. He was an excellent student. He had to learn everything about wood or the basics of wood biology, and he did that very successfully. He did investigation, he finished his uh, project, diploma project, and he also decided to publish with us the first scientific article, which is shown here, and it is available online. We also use the opportunity to learn or to teach uh, him, and, but we also learned a lot how to write the first scientific uh, article in English, and it is a well-accepted one. 
Martin de Luis from Alicante visited Ljubljana one month ago, also for international cooperation within Erasmus. And he calculated and made some statistics in which field of science are we publishing together so you can see the fields of science. Then you can see that he cooperated with 29 countries. And I'm using this picture because my situation or the situation of Joseph Traventos would be similar. And he also calculated that he already published with 150 co-authors from all over the world, from more than 100 institutions. And I was so happy to see this graph, and um, so, um, it is also an honor that I'm at the top co-authors of uh, <laughs> uh, Dr. De Luis. And I checked this on ResearchGate without doing statistics. And of course, he is my top co-author. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and it is written in ResearchGate that we have 38 common articles, which is great. But of course, my doctorate, uh, my former doctorate students, Jojica, Grichar, Peter, Prisland are on the top, but many people from Spain are my favorite co-authors, Clem, Josef Perventos, and a lot of colleagues from Zaragoza, like Edurne Martinez, Miguel Angel Sass, and so on. So cooperation with Spain was very productive. And I'm now jumping to Slovenia again, we are very proud that we have a lot of forests. 60% so of Slovenia is covered by the forests. And our main three species is Fagus Silvatica, European beach with 32% in the wood stock. And similar amount belongs to Pizza Abies Norway spruce. Uh, then on the top of the list are also Quercus. We have different uh, species of this genus and also Abies alba. Uh, unfortunately, climate change is very pronounced in Slovenia as well. So we have a lot of problems and I didn't show consequences of climate climatic change in these slides, but we have uh, very hot days in summer, now also exceeding 40 degrees Celsius, which never occurred before. We have very cold days in winter, which are colder than before, uh, with a lot of ice, so they can uh, drop to minus 20, <coughs> which is normal, but cold period, periods sometimes also occur in spring. And due to this, we have a lot of insect attacks, we have a lot of breakage of trees, so problems. Uh, so, the climate of Ljubljana. This is the slide of Martin de Luis, but I love it so much that I have to show it. Our annual amount of precipitation is over 1,300 uh, millimeters. Uh, compared to Alicante with 267. These numbers belong on which period is taken in account, but they are an orientation. And then the mean temperature, 10 degrees in Ljubljana with very cold winter. And in Alicante, for example, 18 degrees. So we have trees, you have trees, Martin de Luis is now working in Zaragoza, therefore he also showed the climogram of this area uh, where and we are investigating trees from all these regions. So the title of the lecture today is Dendrochronology. Sometimes we use the word dendrochronology, sometimes we say tree ring analysis. Why tree ring? Because we, uh, if we cut a tree, 
we can see the rings and this is now the main interest of us and in temperate climate where I live the tree every year forms a ring and here it is much more complicated and we mm, found a lot of many uh, a lot of new things about this so this is also the sample containing tree rings or stripes and how we measure their widths and how we produce graphs showing years and uh, widths of tree rings they are from year to year they are varying from wide to narrow and this is attractive for dendrochronology and this would be just tree rings of 15 trees growing in the same forest. We dendrochronologists see here that they are similar. We also have a lot of statistics to check the similarity or the difference between tree ring graphs of different trees. And such a graph is a kind of historical record which records good and bad climate for a tree and this is what we are using then in various studies. Uh, for if we want to use dendrochronology for historical studies, uh, then we need reference chronologies. We need to know what is now the standard for one tree species and region and period. Therefore, we are investigating trees. All of us are also trying to find historical objects with wood of the same species in the same area. And we try to prolong uh, these records and use them for different reconstructions or to understand the past and the future. And the longest chronology, reference chronology in the world is the one of Oak for southern Germany near Stuttgart uh, or the town, town of Hohenheim. It is more than 10,000 years long and for production of this chronology uh, the team needed 20 years more than 5,000 stems uniformly uh, distributed over this period. When I started to work, uh, our idea was to investigate 5,000 years old archaeological artifacts and the uh, wish was to have a long chronology, but it isn't that easy uh, so uh, we constructed just 550 years long chronology and we employed more than 250 trees from different periods. But when we came 500 uh, years to the past, we suddenly came to periods when, where there is no wood preserved from the past. So, in the history, you have periods when we have a lot of wood from some time and then no wood for certain periods, which is making our life very difficult. That's why we are asking ourselves, does there exist a teleconnection? Teleconnection would mean that chronologies in Slovenia and Germany, for instance, are similar. And in good case, we could hope that the good chronology from Germany would be useful for our uh, artifacts. But unfortunately, there are the Alps between Slovenia and Germany. So the weather which is affecting the tree rings is not uh, the same in these two areas, but still the question of teleconnection is attractive 
and when we started our studies, there were shown just few teleconnections about oak chronologies in, for us, northwestern Europe, southern Germany, Ireland, and so on. Uh, but when we constructed a composed chronology, which is 500 years long, we also discovered that such a chronology has teleconnection to areas in our surrounding. Uh, but T values, which we are using, uh, these are special T values according to Bailey and Pilcher. Uh, if they are four and more, they show confirmed that two chronologies are similar. And you see that in the distance about of 500 kilometers or a little more, the teleconnection works. It works also with southern Germany where the longest chronology exists. And, uh, and it should work with Italy, but Italians didn't manage to compose long chronology. They have a lot of artifacts, but it is very difficult to compose a chronology, uh, and that would require another uh, lecture. Or you can ask later during the discussion if you will still be interested. The situation today is much better. There are more chronologies in Europe, and the connection between them is better now. So again, a discussion how Spain, uh, Spanish chronologies can be teleconnected with chronologies from other areas would require maybe one hour uh, to discuss a little bit that uh, constructing chronologies which would teleconnect with other European chronologies is somehow uh, difficult, but possible. And what are we using this? For instance, for climate reconstruction, and I will say a few words with this. We calculated, um, Martin de Luis was always a co-author, and other Spanish colleagues were nearly always the co-authors when we worked on this. We calculated that conditions in June are very important uh, for the width of a tree ring in oak. If we have um, uh, uh, precipitation in June have positive effect, and temperature has negative effect if you are in Slovenia. And uh, this can be then used to reconstruct when, the, when, when in the past, uh, you can use three rings to tell when in the past June was wet and cool, when June was warm and dry. We use indices for this purpose, and maybe for illustration, we have very different situations. Our dry June has just 37 millimeters of rain in the month. But if we have a wet June, we have 236 of millimeters in one month. That is the amount which is normal for Alicante for the whole year. You can imagine that. Um, um, then also the mean temperatures of June are very varying and these facts were used for calculations and chronology which we composed together and which is 500 years long was then used to reconstruct which years were particularly dry and hot and which years were very wet and cool. And uh, then we also uh, uh, considered what was written in the uh, archives, and many of the years were confirmed. What we calculated was confirmed by archival reports. This is one example. And we could also discuss about this more, uh, with Martin de Luis and many other authors, which you can see on the slide, we investigated oak from many uh, sites uh, in our part of Europe. 
and we calculated that wet June is important on many sites. We investigated 41 sites. And that temperature is in June is also important, but also temperature in other months on other sites can be important, and the same is with precipitation. So the thing is not very similar, uh, it's not very simple. If you are in an area with a radius of 400 kilometers, you can have sites where the same three species uh, has very different conditions. And this tells us a lot for oak dendrochronology. chronology. And PC analysis was uh, used to show the similarity, which was mean that there is one component which affects all the sites in this area, but there uh, were component two and three which were also significant, but they show differences. So in the north, for instance, temperature is becoming more limiting or more important, and in the south, precipitation. So you see uh, then the effect of different conditions on three weeks. Um, so the conditions of, uh, so this knowledge was among others, also used by Ed Hook, very um, famous dendrochronologist, who invited a long list of co-authors, uh, more than 40, I think, and published in Science Advances, uh, and made a reconstruction of climate in Europe. So this article is uh, worth to find it and to read it if you are interested in that. It reconstructs climate uh -huh, uh, from the year one, which is shown here. So this is the beginning of the reconstruction and the year 2012 is the last one. Uh, then brown spots uh, <coughs> or color on the map shows the areas with, with dry conditions and uh, the green color shows the areas with a lot of precipitation. And this article, uh, so this article also provided a slideshow where all the years can be seen. And the article discusses the years which were the most characteristic and uh, the years which were reported in Europe for severe dry, dr drought conditions or uh, they were reporting about floods. Uh, so 1616 is a dry year for instance. Uh, on uh, the quality of reconstruction, of course, depends on how good were three ring chronologies, what were they telling. So there is a lot of work for ecologists to uh, explain all the relations among different sites and different three species which were used in this reconstruction but this shows how a good cooperation with people from different fields can also bring important results which help to understand a lot. I didn't offer you to ask questions. Maybe uh, uh, this film is recorded for the students who couldn't come today. Therefore, I suggest we would have the discussion at the end, but I hope you are recording here or here uh, what would be the questions uh, to be discussed. Um, I could present a very long um, list of examples from cultural heritage, but I left a blank page here but the examples can be shown. I have them in a slideshow. So if you would be interested, and if there will be time, we can discuss them, and I can show them to you. 
Uh, I want to tell you about another thing which I already started. Heteroconnection would be similar, is the word we are using for similarity of chronologies between different key species. There is a lot of good statistics must be behind, but I have uh, pictures to illustrate this. This would be oak wood and this would be beech wood. They are different, but the chronologies of two species from the same site have similarity. And also the very basic statistic with TBP is showing, confirming the similarity. But if you, uh, if you calculate the effect of climatic uh, factors on tree ring variation in these two species, this was in central Slovenia. You would see famous June importance of oak. And for Fagnus beach, you see that three months, May, June, July, are important on the site in central Slovenia. We made much more investigations about that, but I didn't bring all the illustrations. In our case, beach is also growing on high mountains, and then the, uh, the map is completely different. In that case, July temperature has a positive effect. So we have like two beaches, one in the lowland and one in the mountains, with completely different uh, response uh, to climate, with completely different ecological niches. What I wanted to speak today is to tell you something about wood formation, um, which is a synonym, uh, can be also uh, called silogenesis. You can decide which word you prefer. And this is where wood anatomists um, are very desired. This is uh, the topic which discusses how the wood is formed in the tree, but you know that cambium is producing the wood. And we had a lot of investigation in Fagus sepatica in Slovenia. And uh, we started in Slovenia, but we arrived to a lot of comparisons, mainly with Czech Republic and with Spain, around Zaragoza on Moncayo Massif. And uh, Spanish partners were always very important uh, in these studies, which are shown here just with the first water, Peter Prislan. You, uh, to remind you, this would be the map of distribution of Fagus sylvatica and in Spain it is really not abundant and on Moncayo there would be maybe one spot, I don't know if it is indicated here, but it grows, and in Pyrenees and in the north. And how are we doing? We are going to the same tree every week at least during the vegetation period. We have special device to take a small core from the tree. Each, its diameter is two millimeters and the length is one centimeter. We call this quasi non-destructive method. Also, it wounds the tree a little bit. And then we are producing microscopic slides and um, a lot of people from all over the world came to our laboratory to learn these techniques. It sounds simple, but you need a lot of experience and a lot of uh, work to have the good procedure. Then we produce uh, microscopic sections and we observe wood uh, the wood in blue is still forming, and the wood which is reddish color is already formed. And for every week in the year, we are then reconstructing, this would be just a short um, uh, abstract of results, 
we are showing how wood formation just started at the end of April and how wide is one tree ring. It ends here and it starts here at the end of August. So this set of pictures are representative for Ljubljana, the lowland of Slovenia, and this set of pictures is representative for mountain in the Alp, Alps 1,200 meters above sea level. So everything starts much later. Uh, in mid-May, wood formation started and wood formation also finishes more early than in the lowland and finally the tree ring width is much smaller. And we are uh, describing this with pictures or with growth curves. You can again, uh, this would be cumulative growth and this would be the increment of one week. Our students prefer pictures, you maybe prefer graphs and statistics. Uh, and this picture would show that the uh, ring uh, of beach, which starts here and ends here, was formed between 18th April and 22nd August. That is quite a narrow, narrow uh, time range or just short time compared to the whole year. Uh, the distance between two arrows shows how much wood is formed in one week. And uh, the greatest distance would show uh, one quarter of a millimeter. That would be 0 0,25 millimeters. And you see that in the lowland, uh, the processes are very quick at the beginning of June. In cold climates, in uh, 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 21st, <coughs> Uh, 21st June, the summer solstice is very important. And you can see that the S-shaped cumulative curve could be also read from here, the greatest increment which slows uh, towards the end of the, uh, towards the, end of the uh, growing season. And we connected this in various studies. We connected this wood formation to development of leaves. Uh, you know that there are no leaves in winter. In Fagus sylvatica, they appear in mid-April and uh, they are uh, yellow and fall if, at the end of October. We calculated effect of climate on wood formation, on leaf development, and also on tree ring in general. And we found, if I summarize the results, that different processes, this would be beginning of leaves, uh, yellowing of leaves, and this would be tree ring width or index, you can see that different factors are positively or negatively affecting processes which are still correlated in the same individual of a tree. And this is now the circle where we are investigating a lot. And as the first results were published in 2008, uh, in following years, we learned a lot and brought many new results, and a few of them will be shown today. I mentioned that beech is important species of Slovenia, Norway spruce is important as well. This, are, this is, uh, is just the number of cubic meters of this wood which we have in the, in the forests and is available, of course, for industrial conversion. Uh, and uh, this would be then where Pizza Abies is growing. 
uh, it has its natural habitats in the mountains, in our geographical situation, but we spread it also in the lowland. And nowadays with climate change, we have quite a lot of problems with Pizzea abies on lowland sites. Uh, but what we found out from wood formation, we published several uh, articles about wood formation in Pizzea abies, and the results should be then carefully studied and compared with the results of beach. But today we wouldn't have time to uh, to tell all the similarities and differences between the two species. But there are published results with Yoshitsa Grichar as a leading author, not just <coughs> this one in tree physiology, but also in frontiers. So you can find a lot of articles. Uh, <coughs> and, uh, uh, our Pizza Abies was also used in greater studies. This is just a map representing that uh, northern hemisphere of different conifers were used in the same study and it shows that some sites were from Canada, uh, some of them were from Scandinavia. In Central Europe, which is enlarged here, uh, the majority of sites came from the Alps, uh, but we also had uh, colleagues working in Tibet, so we could combine all these results and Sergio Rossi is the leading author and the discussion of, on results would require a lot of time. So we would also, this would be also an opportunity to have another meeting and another lecture. Here would be now a lot of Spanish and Slovenian colleagues, uh, Martin de Luis, Clemen Murvac, Edurne Martinez Castillo, but many others were cooperating, and Peter Trislan, and Jurica Grichar, and Max Merilla, and also Angela Balzano from Napoli, uh, Italy, who is working in Ljubljana already for two years, and we spread our uh, research also to Italy considerably. We had opportunity to meet within Coast Action, which already finished in 2016. It was called Trees with double E here, and we had opportunity to travel and to meet. And I didn't say scientists have to drink coffee together, they have to eat together, they have to travel, they have to go to the field and discuss a lot to find problems and also to find solutions uh, for scientific problems, also for writing articles. A lot of personal contacts are good. It's much easier uh, than doing it uh, over internet. So uh, at least some of the um, contacts are very important. And the next steps, I would tell something what Clemen Rovac could maybe better explain, or Martin de Ruiz. Uh, we were working with the Pinus halepensis, um, from the coastal area where uh, Giuseppe Ravento started the uh, studies. Uh, on Moncayo, we used Fagus sylvatica and Pinus sylvestris, and with, in Slovenia, we already said what. So, what is the main problem with uh, Spanish tree rings and with pe Pinus halepensis in Spain? You maybe already know. So, Pinus halepensis is firstly growing in the coastal area. In Slovenia, we have some sites so we can use them for comparison with Spain, but it is just growing on our coast and it is not growing in the central part of Slovenia, which is hard to call for this species. So there have been many studies on Pinus halepensis in Spain. 
And we discovered, that is the main finding from Josep Traventos, that, that one tree is not formed in one year. You can have so-called false rings, which we call with a um, more politically correct uh, word, intraannual density fluctuation. <coughs> if you have a look at this tree ring, uh, you see early wood and here late wood, but it is interrupted with another early wood, so you don't know. If you start here and end here, do you have one tree ring or two tree rings? So this is really the results of you in Spain. Um, and what did we find out together? In Spain, mm, pines, uh, alipo pines can produce the rings which we call normal. They can produce the rings which have one band of late wood in early wood. This would be called intraannual density fluctuation in early wood. But we can also have a fluctuation in late wood. So this, this, would, this would be intraannual density fluctuation L. And we also did wood formation studies on Spanish sites, Magmo, Guardamar, and Jarafuel, where the sites were investigated. And uh, Clement Novak, in his PhD, and, but already in his diploma, uh, and of course, all the co-workers found out that the tree is not every year producing a ring. Sometimes there is no ring, and maybe this um, uh, slides show. Uh, this is what we understand, the tree ring, normal. This is also a tree ring, but it is just two cells wide. And this ring is... Um, six cells wide on this location, but if you would measure it here, you wouldn't see it. So it means that if you inspect the whole tree, the, uh, the rings, it is some, sometimes here, and then it is sometimes not here. This is the missing ring. And Clement Novak is the main author of this uh, 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 of the study, where we show how missing ring is produced or not produced, uh, but he also found. So you could read the article and see the whole story, but he also found out that throughout the year, the cambium made an impression that it is producing cells, but then they disappeared, and we invented or uh, discovered so-called dark rings, which you can barely see with, with your the wood, but when you have the, uh, the uh, microscopic section, you can see the dark ring. And if Clement invites you to drink coffee with him, he could talk uh, the whole afternoon to explain you all little details. Our wood formation studies also showed how uh, uh, intraannual density fluctuation is shown, uh, is formed, for instance, in Guardamar. We thought in August, okay, the ring will be narrow this year, but then suddenly in October, in Slovenia, it would be all over. But in Guardamar, the cambium started to produce um, new uh, cells, and another part of the ring was formed, which had a fluctuation. So uh, the investigations were the best uh, replicated in the year of 2005. In uh, Harafuel, a normal ring was formed. In Magmo, there was no ring. And in Guardamar, there was a false ring with uh, 
early within late June, and that all happened on this small area, a couple of kilometers, but the uh, elevation fluctuated, so Harafuit is more uh, on higher elevations. And again, the discussion on this could be very long. Uh, finally, I could uh, say again that currently we are trying to publish similarities and differences about Fagus Silvatica in Moncayon and Slovenia. And uh, Pinus Silvestris was taken as, uh, as conifer on Moncayon side and Pin Picea habeas in Slovenia. And we have shown, for instance, that uh, pine in Spain, in this case, started producing new cells already in February and uh, didn't stop until nearly the end of the year, so it had a very long period of production, but the ring was very narrow. So I must ask you, are we, uh, do we have problem with time? Do we no, have no, five, no, we no, have no, five no, more no, minutes? No. We have, let's say, five more minutes. So, uh, conifer in Spain uh, had production of wood, which was extending over the year, but the ring was very narrow. So, and in Slovenia, uh, the example was, um, uh, for instance, uh, uh, lowland site in beach which had very narrow growth uh, period, but very wide ring. So it's very important how quickly the cells are produced. And this intercorrelation is, will be discussed, so I think that all this cannot be discussed now. But this map produced by Spanish colleagues who are from geography department, which I forgot to mention, show green, green spots in different areas over Europe, and small uh, spot shows narrow ring, and big uh, spot shows uh, uh, wide ring, and then the uh, uh, I made a mistake. So green spot is showing Fagus sylvatica, and small spot means uh, short duration of wood formation and narrow ring, and big spot means big ring. And for Pinus silvestris, it is shown that the formation of the, uh, of the wood was very long. Uh, so different size of spots here more shows how long the wood is produced in, in different uh, organisms all over the Europe. And these results are still discussed, they are still evaluated for publications. They are, they are not yet published and there are still some open questions. Uh, for concluding, I would show uh, words, few slides, I will show that the wood forms central part in the trees, cambium and bark are in the outer part, and we also investigated this tissue, cambium, and we observed it under the microscope. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and this picture shows that cambium accepts the stimulation from the environment, but the window is not open all the year, especially not in temperate conditions. Uh, in our conditions, it is open between April and, let's say, September. In other conditions, it could be open longer. Um, this was the um, graph. I showed at the beginning of our cooperation. It would say that temperate trees produce wood from April to September, but for a uh, Mediterranean climate, we knew that they can start production very early, 
that they usually often don't produce anything in July if it is hot and dry, but they can uh, resume producing wood later in autumn. What is the, what happens in between wasn't really known, but now we have much more results to also show what is happening in between. And the answers to these uh, crucial questions were published in different articles, always with the leading author, Peter Prislan in different years, and as you see in different journals. And it is uh, not difficult to find the uh, results uh, in different bibliographies uh, on the internet. Uh, the article of 2016 is comparing uh, three, three species from our area and from uh, Mediterranean area. So cambium zone is here and we are observing it under the microscope. If we have just a normal light microscope, we don't see much. But if you are using electron microscope, we can see the organelles in the cells, for instance, vacuola. If vacuola is big, it was shown by these results, it means that cambium is active. So you can say, okay, it is active. If the, uh, if, uh, the cell in the cambium contains numerous small vacuola, it means it is dormant, it is not working. And there are also interesting processes in between and if we, we would have more time, we could also describe other differences, but these two differences are big, uh, are, uh, obvious and help us to understand what we are doing. Um, so the study uh, made uh, such uh, investigations in Pinus halepensis from Guardamar, in Pinus uh, halepensis from Slovenian coast, and then in Slovenia, we also sampled Pinus silvestris from the coast and from the inland where Pinus halepensis is not growing. And what we found out that the cambium cells in Guardamar showed non-dormant active state all over the year. Uh, that's why we used the green color here. The same species is uh, in Slo on Slovenian coast where the temperatures are slightly uh, lower than here and we have more precipitation, so 900 millimeters. It was in winter, appeared to be dormant, wasn't so clear, but Pinus silvestris growing on the same side had clearly dormant um, cambium. And in surroundings of Ljubljana, the cambium was at the same time completely dormant. This shows uh, winter conditions or, or, or summarizes the situation throughout the year. And uh, the article uh, shows circles. Uh, circles are showing the, uh, the whole year from January to December, and Guardamar is practically green the whole year. We only don't know uh, what is happening in December around winter solstice. So maybe some cells had an intermediate characteristics, but some of them were clearly active. Whereas in Ljubljana conditions, winter with blue color was long and the cells were completely dormant. Uh, they were active during the vegetation period uh, from April to September, and in between they had clear tra transitional state, and it was possible to describe it. And um, 
This study on cambium activity is very original and it required, really, it required a lot of cooperation, a lot of sampling in Spain and Slovenia, a lot of traveling uh, from Spain to Slovenia because the samples were processed in Slovenia. And uh, so the results are here and have been published and they have to answer many things. And I can only say, uh, but this would maybe make you really tired. Near uh, cambium is not producing only wood, it is also producing phloem, which is on the outer part. And this would be the article which we recommend to read if you would be interested to see differences in flow and structure in temperate and Mediterranean trees. Jožica um, Griča, the leading author, and again the known uh, colleagues, authors, a lot of Spanish colleagues again. And what is the main result? If cambium is here, this is wood produced in one year, and this is phloem produced in one year. So the cambium produces much more wood than phloem, but you know phloem is transporting products of photosynthesis downwards, so it is very important. Uh, important conductive tissue. In temperate species, you can see the uh, tree, ring, tree, uh, tree rings in phloem. We would call it phloem rings. And you can tell what was formed in one year. You can tell that just for the youngest phloem rings because later in their life they collapse and you cannot recognize their structure. But what this study found uh, in Guadamar, for instance, uh, or in entire um, Pinos Philippines is a population in Spain, it is not possible to see any growth ring boundary in Florem. And this indicates that cambium never loses its ability to produce new cells, even when it is not producing wood. In winter, maybe it is producing phloem. And this study uh, also opens new questions, and we will be very happy if we will be able to answer them in the near future, so there will be a lot of op opportunity to continue cooperation. This would be I, what I call quick overview, mm -hmm. which took us one hour. Um, I would thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Katarina. It has been a very nice talk. And I am sure that the student has enjoyed a lot. And I am sure that they have a lot of questions. Do you have questions? It's opportunity. Um, <clears throat> I did my master thesis in dendrochology in Italy, in a heterotopical beach forest, extra zonal beach forest. And I would like to know if in Slovenia there are heterotopical beach forests. And if you studied it, and how is the situation on production, if the climate change is working on? Yeah. I don't know if yeah. From, it, uh, from which group are you? Um, University of Tusha, Di Filippo yes. and yes. uh, We cooperated a lot with the group, uh, with Alfredo Di Filippo and Gianluca Piovesan. Yeah and we joined our data together and the most important article telling differences about beach population was published by uh, Di Filippo in 2007. Uh, and uh, Di Filippo is uh, Alfredo Di Filippo and Gianluca Piovesana also on the list of uh, our uh, frequent co-authors 
So we can discuss more in details later. We are very proud for beach populations in Slovenia, which grow on very different sites. But I always say that Italian sites are even more diverse because we don't have them near the sea on very high in the mountains. They are just few, but you have even richer variety. So cooperation between these two countries when we are speaking on beach is always very important. Thank you. Any more questions? Uh, well, uh, Professor Caterina will be here tomorrow, and then if you have uh, any questions, just came to the office and will be Caterina there. Can just talk to her in more detail. Uh, I have one question, Caterina. Yes. Uh, well, what are your priorities in investigation? What uh, is your field? Uh, uh, my field of interest is wood. That is why it is uh, here. Uh, all aspects of wood. Uh, so our group is also known for working with uh, historical uh, wood. As uh, I said that I have examples and I didn't show them to you. For instance, recently, we were working a lot on investigations on, of violins. Uh -huh. uh, that was also done in cooperation with colleagues from Italy a lot because Cremona with big collections of violins is in Italy. We had a post-action wood music and I have to mention it and the knowledge uh, and with the, uh, when uh, we were with people working in the museum or with musicians and people who are producing instruments, uh, we wood scientists were there uh, to explain them how dendrochronology can be used to answer all these questions, how all this smiling, who made it, where was the wood from, and most of all, is it original or fake? Uh, and now I will take you another minute uh, to show this. If you see, we have to measure ring widths on the belly of the instrument, and it is usually made of spruce, Norway spruce, so it's important that we know a lot about uh, spruce and um, this would be an example of the violin which was presumably produced by Andrea Guarneri mm -hmm. who, who died in 1698 was dated to 1640 which was uh, in the period of Guarneri's life but dendrochronology show that the uh, violin's uh, chronology graph is completely similar to a graph of um, uh, instruments of Jakob Steiner, who worked in Vienna. Mm -hmm. So we couldn't confirm the Guarneri's origin, but that the uh, violin is old and famous, but not from the producer. It was thought and there was a lot of falsification of inscriptions in the violin. <laughs> they had the whole industry to produce, uh, to produce uh, uh, forest uh, 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 labels, and this was one example of them. And since the Italian colleague asked us, this is the picture uh, which was put on. Uh, uh, Facebook uh, by Francesco Piazzentini from uh, Padova. This is now city picture of uh, of violin, and recently the city has such a good resolution uh, that you can see the three rings, and you can virtually or colleagues can virtually cut the violin on the half 
and then we can measure the rings on this image, which is very good result, and we are very happy to do that. And uh, when I'm also investigating uh, the wood from pile dwellings, this were the dwellings like this, which existed 5,000 years ago, and they existed all over, uh, all around the Alps. This would be the Alps, and this is Venice, and here is Lithuania. Um, such settlements were everywhere uh, in northern Italy, in southern Germany, and so on. Um, we managed to teleconnect after 20 years our uh, three ring series from Ljubljana to the long reference of southern Germany, and we dated them. So we nearly we were very exhausted when we arrived to this result. And this shows that the settlements 3,700 BC are among our oldest, but the youngest finished in 2,400 when the pyramid of Cheops in uh, Egypt was built. So this uh, culture existed before, but in Italy, there are a lot of sites which are also younger in the Bronze Age, so northern Italy is full of younger sites as well, so this culture existed even longer. And in Ljubljana, we are mainly, all the people who work with this are mainly investigating the pilots, which were the foundation of the houses, which were built on the lake shore mainly, but we had the privilege to investigate the oldest wheel in the world, which is 5,150 mm -hmm. years old. So such old wheels were reported in Mesopotamia. Uh, they existed and they were invented there, but there were only records, uh, carvings in the walls or models of wheels. But uh, we are lucky that in our era we discovered one and we investigated it. This would be two examples of what we are doing. And there are many examples because we are working with cultural history quite a lot. It's amazing, no? <laughs> the scope of this investigation. Oh, excellent, thanks. Any uh, questions? Uh, as I said before, uh, if you have any question tomorrow, you can find, um, find Katarina. I'm sure she can ask you all of you. There is another opportunity. I hope you uh, recorded my email. Mm -hmm. I have on Moodle, I have the topics of my lectures. So if you would need them, you can write to me and I will provide you access to my Moodle page and then you can have more if you want. Or if you have specific question to be asked by email, you are invited, you are welcome. Thank you very much for your attention.